Well, I've got to be frank with you. There is a lot of stuff riding on our United States election, and the crap is hitting the fan right now uh, when it comes to wars and rumors of wars. I mean, the Middle East is a complete wreck, uh, and so is Ukraine, Russia, China, Taiwan, and right here in the United States of America, our own crap is hitting the fan uh, when it comes to this growing tension, if you will, between Republicans and Democrats. And our politicians are doing everything in their power, quite frankly, on both sides to make matters worse. But the bottom line is we have to get the right people in, um, voted in office in 2024. And, and, and with that said, I obviously think the best man for the job is Donald J. Trump, and he has just issued a very ominous red alert to the American people, and I think this alert should be taken rather seriously. Um, take a look at this, and I found this on um, TASS.com, and, and it gives a breakdown uh, of what Donald Trump is talking about. It says, Trump worries World War III could break out in the coming months, and this was just posted October 12th, but it states, U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump is worried that World War III could break out in the next four months due to policies of the Democrats leading the U.S. government. I actually worry about the next three months. I really do. I worry about the next three and a half to four months, and I worry that it will end up in a world war because of this, the people that we have in government, he said at a rally in the state of California. Trump again promised that if he wins the presidential election, he will be able to resolve the conflict in Ukraine, as well as end the chaos in the Middle East. Now, I am hopeful that that's exactly what Donald Trump will do. And I can't help but shake this feeling uh, that the Biden and Harris administration are kind of encouraging the war, at least through Russia and Ukraine. In fact, everything that this administration has done has really hinted that they're not wanting to stop the war. In fact, they want it to go on and on. But Donald Trump is literally telling us that if we continue on this path, the crap's going to hit the fan in about three to four months. And he said that if he becomes president, he can end the chaos in the Middle East. Now, I'm not very confident that anyone can end the chaos in the Middle East, uh, if I'm quite frank with you, because there's a lot of actual biblical prophecy going on, on right now regarding the Middle East, but I'm confident he could definitely do something about Russia and Ukraine, right? We can we need to end any war that we possibly can right now. Now, before I dive in to what the hell is going on internationally, I got to give a quick break to my sponsor. Now, we have been told our entire lives that wrinkle creams are the way to look younger, but now one doctor says that that's nothing but old news. According to Dr. John Lake, the world-renowned Beverly Hills beauty expert, most wrinkle fixes on the market are nothing but glorified moisturizers. Well, recently, Dr. Lake has focused his attention away from mainstream cosmetic practices. Why? Well, so that he can focus directly on anti-aging revolutionary breakthroughs. Now, his clients have dubbed this do-it-yourself technique the age rewinder method because it can take years and even decades off of your appearance in two minutes' time. In light of this amazing breakthrough, Dr. Lake has released a step-by-step -step video to the public where he outlines exactly how to use simple solutions from home. Now, if you want to check it out, all you have to do is go to bhmd1.com forward slash haven. That's bhmd1.com forward forward slash Haven to watch that video. And if you want more information, you can click in the description box below. There's a link down there. Or if you're on your cell phone, click that more button to get more information, but you're not going to want to miss it out as this product has been life-changing for me personally. All right, back to the broadcast. So let's start first with how bad things are transpiring right now in the Middle East and how close we are to being dragged into all-out war in support of Israel, right? Take a look here, dailymail.co.uk. Hezbollah claims to have destroyed Israeli military bases in blistering missile strike as clashes continue in Lebanon on Yom Kippur. Now, the article goes on to state this, Hezbollah claimed it has destroyed four 
military bases in Israel today as it launched a blistering rocket attack across the southern border. The Iranian proxy group said it had hit bases in Al-Jahar, Zarit, and bases in the Golden Heights after claiming to have pushed back advancing forces late Friday. So we're talking about four separate military bases in Israel um, that Hezbollah claimed to hit. Well, of course, we also have this uh, on the Israeli side, and this is also on Daily Mail. Israeli tanks burst through gates of the UN peacekeeper base in Lebanon as Benjamin Netanyahu demands UNIFIL withdrawal from Hezbollah stronghold and combat zones. It goes on, Israeli tanks have burst through the gates of the UN peacekeeping base in southern Lebanon, the UN confirmed today. It comes after Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu divided uh, demanded the UNIFL withdraw from combat zones and Hezbollah strongholds and accused the UN of advertently, inadvertently providing terrorists with human shields. In a statement addressed to UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez, Netanyahu said the time has come for you to withdraw UNIFIL from Hezbollah strongholds and from the combat zones. We all know that Israel has been fed up lately with all the crap going on and the war over there has really exploded. So then there's this on CNN. Four Israeli soldiers have been killed, more than 60 people injured by Hezbollah drone in one of the bloodiest attacks on Israel since October 7th. That was as of October 14th. We're talking just within the last couple days. Here is Reuters. Israel kills at least 21 in strike on a Christian town in northern Lebanon. This was also October 14th. And then we have this, CNN World. Iran warns the U.S. that it's going to retaliate against any future Israel strike. So they're threatened retaliation. That's not all. We also have this from Putin. Don't you dare attack Iran. Putin's direct warning to Israel. Russia declares support to Tehran. So these alliances are forming right now. And I'm going to show you an even bigger alliance in a moment, but between Putin and Iran, he says, don't you dare. Basically, if you do, we will fill in the blank. And of course, the U.S. is kind of stuck, shall we say, in a rock and a hard place. Anyway, uh, then there's this. Iran has threatened to recalculate its nuclear weapon program. We definitely don't want more nuclear weapons out there, especially in the hands of Iran. So because of all that and what is going on, what does the United States do? Well, we are now deploying 100 U.S. troops over to that area. Take a look at this Zero Hedge article. Uh, some 100 U.S. troops will deploy in Israel to man anti-air batteries. On Saturday, we were among the first outlets and this is Zero Hedge, to report the U.S. is preparing to deploy THAAD anti-ballistic missile system in Israel, a major development which will put American troops directly in harm's way or boots on the ground amid the tension showdown with Iran. The Pentagon, in a follow-up statement to the New York Times, has confirmed that THAAD systems will be sent to Israel and that about 100 American troops will operate them. Now, Donald Trump gave that statement about the coming World War III, October 12th is when this was uh, posted and, and at that event. And now we're literally sending troops over to that area, to Israel, in light of the tensions that are rising. I mean, this is some pretty intense stuff when we're talking war. Now, Joe Biden has came out, shall we say... I wouldn't even um, call it in support of Trump. You know, they've always been wanting war with Iran. Let's just be frank there. But here we have MSN.com. Biden warns Iran that U.S. would consider assassination attempts on Trump an act of war. Hmm. So apparently then there's that to add a little bit of more fuel to the fire. But what really scares me is um, there's a war that's spoken of in the, in the Bible, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, and it's Gog and Magog, which basically Russia, Iran, these kind of areas. And so this next article that I'm going to show you really screams that we could be looking at world war and we could be looking at some of the major players here if it ever does transpire, right? But take a look. And this is on LIIsraelnews.com. Axis of Ezekiel 38, question mark. Turkish President Erdogan calls for Russia, Iran, Turkey, and Syria to align 
against Israel. Turkish President uh, uh, Erdogan told local media on Saturday that Russia, Iran, Syria should do more to protect Syria's territorial integrity. It is essential that Russia, Iran, and Syria take more effective measures against this situation, which poses the greatest threat to Syria's territorial integrity. Erdogan said when asked about the recent alleged Israeli airstrike in the nation's capital, Damascus. So this is an alliance. You're uh, Russia, Iran, Syria, Turkey. This is the kind of alliance of that Gog and Magog war spoken of, spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 38. Meanwhile, Moscow is also plunging a relationship with Beijing that could throw China into the mix as well, which these are all things some of us know, but Moscow and Beijing ple pledge to strengthen military tie as Russia defense ministers visit China. So they're obviously bringing in Russia into the mix as well. So you could have Turkey, Iran, Syria, Russia, uh, and uh, China. And then you'd have what? The United States of America, Israel, maybe some of our NATO allies, just maybe. Who knows? Uh, we have been the ones that have constantly come to the rescue of other countries, but no country has really come to our rescue. Now, have they? Maybe that's one of the reasons why you don't really find America in the book of Revelation in the end time Bible prophecy, right? Meanwhile, talk about stupidity of the current sitting government. How about this? And Justice Knight did a whole report on this on Restricted Republic. I really hope you guys are there. But spy drones swarmed Langley Air Base, Pentagon unable, seriously, unable to counter threat. Um, if there's a threat in the sky, you can take the threat down. But they're not considering it a threat. Now, why would you do that? These, these drones are not little things, right? Some of them are fairly big and they're just letting them fly over one of our most valuable bases in the country, Langley. Uh, it, and <laughs> they're doing nothing. The only thing I have to say about that is that it's being allowed on purpose. And somebody's got to question Joe Biden's ties to China, not to mention up and coming potential Tim Waltz. Are these drones linked to China or Russia? Should we really be concerned about them? And, and the answer is absolutely, hell yeah, we should be. Meanwhile, talk about tensions with China right now. Take a look at this. China deploys a record 125 warplanes and large-scale military drill in warning to Taiwan, kind of surrounding their island there. That's chilling, because if they go to war with Taiwan, we're pulled into the mess as well. Anyway... Um, that there is a big fear out there that World War III could definitely play out in the next three to four months, according to Donald J. Trump. And this is a red alarm warning. Um, and that's why I say it as such. But again, I go back. He worries because of the people in charge that we could absolutely go to war. And I cannot disagree with him at all. If the Biden-Harris administration continues to stay in charge, I don't doubt that we could be looking at war. And everything right now is really lining up and nothing good comes from massive wars like this. What does happen is millions, and I believe it could even be billions of deaths with the technology we ha now have available. And a lot of people are kind of underplaying the real threat of this. It's a real threat and it's something we absolutely need to keep on the forefront, especially where we're making a decision to vote for a candidate. Anyhow, I love you guys. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.